Hey guys, Tim here from TimKipTutorials.com and welcome to part 3 of our user-based community site tutorial series. Um, in part 2 we have designed our uh, register or registration form and uh, we created our parse registration script which will allow us to insert users in the database uh, also checking the email and username to make sure they do not exist. Um, so now we need to create the jQuery file uh, that will link this form to our parsing script because we're going to do everything behind the scenes without changing pages so it looks uh, a little better. And I think it's pretty cool. So what we need to do is go over here to uh, I'm working in Notepad++. You can open whatever you're working in. And we're going to open up our uh, JS folder and inside we're going to open up custom.js. Inside of there I have some code that we're going to paste in because I'm not going to type it all for you or else you got bored and you got the stuff to do. So I'll go ahead and explain this for you. Basically what we're doing is we're opening the document.ready function so pretty much when the document is ready it's going to uh, load any code that's inside of here. Uh, first thing we're doing is for the ID of regsubmit which is over here in the registration.php uh, right here which is our button for registering your account, we're going to be adding a click function to it, or a click event. So anytime that button's clicked, all of this code is going to uh, execute. The first thing we're doing is we're setting up a variable called process, and we're equaling it to true. We're going to be using that down here, um, and I'll explain why in just one second. Uh, next thing we're doing is for our ID table, or ID of registration, which is our registration table, which is right here, we're using jQuery to uh, loop through each of the inputs. So pretty much what it's doing when you hit the button, it's running this for each of the inputs. That's why it says each. So dot each, it's going to run this function through each of those. So each one of these it's going to run this function for. Uh, pretty much we're checking, we're going to say if the trim of this value, value, so meaning if it's on this input, oops, wrong file, this input of first name, it's going to check this ID, so it's going to say if the ID of first name, the value inside of the text area is nothing, um, and also we're trimming it so they can't just put a space in there, so if the trim of it is nothing, then we're going to equal the process to false. Um, so pretty much if it loops through and everything has uh, content in it and nothing is blank, uh, this will never run. Or this uh, process variable will never be set to true, uh, false and it will still be true. So the next thing we're doing is we're checking to see if the process is still equal to true. That means that none of the inputs uh, right here are empty. If it is, or I'll... Uh, before we go through that, we're going to say if it is false, it's going to run the else condition all the way at the bottom here. And it's going to say uh, that reg span, which is that empty span in the registration table uh, right here before the button, that the HTML inside of that is going to be font color of red, size of minus one. It's going to say all fields re required because all the fields have not been uh, turned in. So uh, pretty much. Once again, it's going to set the process to true, uh, go through each of the input fields in the registration form, and check to see if they're empty. If one of them is empty, it's going to set it to false, and then it's going to continue checking, and then it's going to go to either going to go continue, or it's going to go to the else statement and exit the script. Uh, if it is true, we're going to check to see if the username is more than four characters. Um, you don't have to do this, but I'm doing it because I want it more than four characters. We're going to collect all the variables uh, from the input field, so we have the ID of first name, last name, username, password, email, and verify email. And we got the dot val, which is the value of the ID. So we're going to set those to the uh, according, or variables according to the name. And we're going to say if username dot length, which is uh, username, the value of username is right here, dot length is greater than or equal to four, then it's going to uh, carry on. If it's not equal to 4, it's going to go down here to this else statement right here and say username is too short. 
and it's going to enter the script or exit the script. So if it is more than four, it's going to go here to check and see if the email addresses match. Uh, we're going to say if email is equal to verify email, so that is if these two fields right here match, so you can't have two different email ad ad addresses, obviously, if you're going to verify it. It's going to check those if they equal each other. If they do equal, they continue. If not, it's going to say email fields do not match. And if they do match, we're going to check to see if the username is taken. Now this is where our parse registration.php script comes into place. Basically the first thing I'm doing is setting that uh, reg span, which is the span next to the button. I have a, a loading GIF that spins around to say that's processing so people know something's happening. You can just change this to whatever you want. You can just say loading or something like that. But what I have done is in my images folder I, all I did was I pasted in this loading GIF and it's a little green and white circle that spins around and stuff like that you'll see but for all the ones that say the image source there's a couple of them down here there's some down here maybe not I guess there's only one spot for it but um, you can just put loading or something like that um, the next line is post uh, so dollar sign period post. This is the jQuery post post method. The first uh, parameter it passes right here is the file that you're going to be uh, posting to, which in this case is in the scripts folder, parse underscore registration dot php, which is which is the file that we went over on part two to check the email, the users, and if uh, stuff like that. So what it's doing is it, these the next one or next parameter is separated with a comma. And inside the two uh, curly braces, you send your post variable. So the variable name is action and with a value of equal to check inside of double quotes. So right here, we're saying a, a email with a uh, variable of email, which will pass the email from the form. And we're also doing that for the username since we're checking the email and the username. Um, and you'll notice it has action equals check, so when it comes to the script, it looks for the action of check, and it uh, runs any script in, in between here. So, um, the next parameter is the function, uh, check data. So pretty much anything that's being returned from uh, parse registration will be handled inside of this variable called check underscore data. And this is where those numbers come into play. Uh, in the parse registration script, it says echo 3, echo 1, echo 2, echo 0, stuff like that. Uh, whenever you're echoing back out, that's this is what is being stored in that check data variable. So we're saying if it's 0, everything is fine and ready to use. Uh, or else, going down here, say else if check data is equal to 1, that means the email uh, already exists, which is right here, it's echoing 1. We're going to say with that reg span, we're going to say email already has been used. And if it equals two, which means username already exists, we're going to say username is taken. Uh, same thing, check data is three. Uh, email already, or username already exists. That's a bad comment. We're just going to say invalid email. And we're going to say invalid e or email is invalid. Or, and then I just put else, so if it's not catching one, two, three, or zero, for debugging purposes, I just put an alert of, of whatever is being sent back from our form. So that way, if we have an error in our parse registration script, uh, it will be alerted in a dialog box here. So you sort of know what's going on, or else you're not going to know. Um, so back up here to where it says if it's zero, which means that the check has gone through all of these checks in the parse registration script, and uh, email doesn't exist and the username doesn't exist, it's going to echo zero. Which mean it can continue the registration. Um, so once again we're going through the registration inputs and this time we're separating it with a comma and we're collecting the registration button. So whoops, sorry about that. It's pretty much collecting all these fields and the button and it's uh, setting the ID and we're setting an attribute of disable. So pretty much disabling all of the input field and the button so you can't uh, change the settings. And then it continues on and uses another post 
to the parse registration script again. This time we're passing the action of register. So that means it will execute everything in this register uh, section right here and register the user. And we're passing first name, last name. Uh, and let me just point out the first name or the first thing here is the posted variable name separated by a, a colon. And then if you had, since this is stored in a variable, if you just wanted to manually put in a name like Tim, it has to be inside double quotes. Unless it's a variable, then you want it uh, in double quotes. So last name, email, username, password. And we're storing all of the return data in reg underscore data. So we're saying if reg data equals one, which means the query uh, has been performed successfully and the mail has been sent out, we're going to empty out the span, which either has the loading graphic or an error message, and we're going to fade in that reg underscore success dialog, which in our registration.php, the reg underscore success is congratulations, your account's been activated or registered, and, or else if it equals zero, it's going to fade in the um, failed one. So that's pretty much the custom underscore JS script we have right now um, for our reg submit click function. So we'll go ahead and test it out. We're going to go ahead and refresh the page. We're going to hit register account. It says all fields are required. And we're just going to actually give me one second. I'm going to upload this onto a live internet server so you can I can show you how the email works. Um, I'm going to modify my email uh, settings in my parse registration script. I'm going to actually use my email address right here so you can uh, see it actually in action. So I'm not going to show you what my email address is, but I'm going to go ahead and test it out and I'll be back right when it's online. All right, I have everything up loaded onto my uh, test site on the live server. And uh, this is the next page to go to the register page. Hit register account, all fields are required. Go ahead and enter in uh, my uh, stuff. We're just going to use, I'll just put my email address in for now, which uh, username we'll just put Tim, Kip, password is 123. Actually, we're going to take this out and we'll put a different random thing in there. It's going to say email fields do not match. We're going to change it back to there. And we're going to hit register. The little loading symbol comes up and you can see congratulations your account has been successfully registered. And you must activate your account to log in. Um, if we go over here to the database, hit browse in our user table, it says Tim Kip uh, email, username, password, activation code and activated is zero. And if I go over here to my email, it says activate your account. Welcome to the site, Tim, your account registration. Uh, click or whatever it says, I'm retarded. All right, it says your site here, ID is equal to one, activate is equal to our activation code, which is right here. So that works out great. And then it has email and password right there. And so if we're going to go register again, just go back to our index page, go to register, try the same stuff with the same email address. We should get an error that's saying the username and password or username and email have already exist. So it's going to say email is already used. So if I just change it to something random, and it says username is taken, so if I were to change it again, it says username taken, I'm just going to put in a new one, just say Tim Kip 01 hit register, congratulations, if we go back to the table, and hit browse, you can see it's entered in again. So, that'll do it for part two, or I'm sorry, part three, part two and three were the register uh, account form. Um, the parse registration script and the jQuery that handles the registration. So I hope you enjoyed these two tutorials. Um, links will be in the description um, for part three, two, and one. 
and part four will be in the link as well whenever I get it posted. So hope to see you guys in part four.